maybe let's start off with you mentioned it. Yeah. Tell me what you have for breakfast this morning. Oh, I have. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I had a very boring breakfast, you know, uh, some some cornflakes, uh, yogurt, uh, Indian chai, uh, along with a few biscuits. Cornflakes and yogurt? Yeah. <laughs> that is new. They don't get soggy? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, it's, I, I don't mind it, uh, being them soggy. So yeah. As long as the combination looks good. As long as it looks good? Yeah. Like the taste good, like in the combination. Uh, ah, that's good. Nice. Nice. Bona, let me hear it, man. I had uh, overnight oats. Check the mic real quick. Make sure it's switched on. Is it up? Uh, there we go. All right, sweet. Yeah, they were cooking the grease. Yeah, I had overnight in oats. I've been trying this new thing lately where I soak the oats in, like, soy milk. Uh, I'll throw some cheese seeds in there and some banana and some fruit. Overnight oats. Yeah. So, so it's a game changer. Now, 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 is it prepackaged or is it something that somebody already kind of has? No, I just have oatmeal. It's your, your own special recipe. Here. I got oatmeal. I got <laughs> right. chia seeds, bananas, and then, uh, and then just soy milk. You just mix it up, and then you leave it overnight, and it's like... I used to just eat oatmeal, and it was just so bland, and I couldn't take it, and switched to this, and it's significantly better. Nice, brother. Nice. Well, everybody's mics are good, man. I mean, and, and you know, we were talking. I, I, was, I always like to kind of get right into it and keep a more casual type of conversation, and it's like we were talking about how do you measure quality on your podcast, you know, like because you guys are getting into podcasting. You guys, you guys are launching a show for Climate AI. Have you guys thought about an actual name yet? Do you guys have a name for the podcast? Yeah, we are still debating that. Okay. Uh, a few options have come up. Okay. Uh, for example, Agriculture Adapts. Uh, What's it called? Ag-, Ag Adapt. Ag Adapt. Okay. Uh, that's one. What are the other options, Bona? I think New Farmer's Almanac would be cool. Oh, well. uh, I like New that. New Farmer's think, Almanac. Yeah. Respect that. All right, yeah. But we were kind of, I thought the best approach would be to like, to see out a few different episodes, like four or five, and yep. to see what kind of themes resonate between those, and then sort of pick out like the artwork and the intro and the name. I think that's the. I think that's a better way to go about yeah. it, actually. Yeah, you know, I haven't done, I haven't recommended that approach or tried it with the other three shows I'm working with, but it, I think that's a better way because that will give you some data, like kind of yeah. hear your tone, and, you know, and, and catch your speed. One of the big things to kind of answer your question, you're asking about the quality of the podcast and how you know it's at the right level. I think it takes time to figure out your voice. And one of the things where I think a lot of brands are going is how they are companies. And when you think about the brand, obviously people think automatically the color scheme and how the, and the feel and look they want to have. That's obvious stuff these days. But the tone that we're going to have, because so much stuff is turning to audio, is going to have to come into thought as well. And so how do you figure out your tone? You don't really know your tone until you kind of get into it. I don't know how to test it yet. You know, like I don't... I don't know if there's a formula for it, but I, I think you'll know after you get into a good 10 episodes and you guys find your rhythm and find your pace with it. So so finding a good publisher that can match your tone of the brand, I think, is very subjective. It's not like a hardcore line I could I could think of that we could draw, but I think that's really, um, yeah, it just it takes time to do it. So that, yeah, I, that's a pretty cool way to roll it out, man. One of the... One of the interesting things that I heard from someone that we were uh, interviewing for the post-production was that they, one of the customers that they were working with actually posted on their first eight episodes, like, we didn't know what we were doing. If you want high quality, you can jump to episode eight. And I was like, that's actually a really smart idea. Like, they're just being upfront with people. Like, we didn't know how to edit. We didn't know what our tone was yet. If you want, like, some good episodes, jump ahead. Right. So on that note, like, Joe, have you, has has there been a research that you have come across that certain kinds of tone... Uh, resonate a lot more with your audience or like how to test for like which tone resonates the most with your audience yeah man you know so me because I'm on the sales front and I feel like I'm on the front lines of the, of the company that I work with it gives me a really close feel to the customers right because I'm with them I, I talk to them I'm following up with them and you figure out what people want and a lot of times it's just through listening and that's where one of the podcasts I have is called sales culture to give myself my own plug here but it's about how that tone about sales is changing. It has to be more about listening. And listening is literally you listen to your, your actual clients and you find out what's important <coughs> to them. That's the shit that you want to sell anyway. And so, you know, finding that tone is based off of kind of what's going to catch their ear, I would say, for them. Like based off what you guys can bring to the table and what's valuable to them. And that's where the tone, I believe, really is that. That's that Venn diagram, I think, of where it sits. Um, so I think it's really through listening to your customers is the best way to get it. And, um, you know, unfortunately, and there's still a lot, and we were, me, me and Henry were talking about this earlier, is how sales is, like, still perceived as sometimes by a lot of people by hitting the door hard, trying to close hard. And 
that shit doesn't fly with anybody. <laughs> you, you know, like, I mean, cause, <laughs> I mean, it, it just doesn't work anymore. I mean, I mean, that's not how it's done. It's really more of that honesty piece. Like, hey, the first eight episodes, we're trying to figure it out. People, I think, would respect that a whole lot more. Mm. I would. You know, I would have much rather someone say, hey, I don't know yet, but I'm working on it, and I'll get better at it, and I'll stay on it, and this is what we're trying to do. You know? Opposed to the other play, place of the fake it till you make it, hey, we already got it figured out. You know, I'm ready to rock and roll. Let me show you how great I am, if you're not great. <laughs> yeah. You know? So, I mean, hopefully that answers your question. But, yeah, that, that whole tone portion is, I think, a lot coming from listening. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, um, but, but you know, it, it's, it's funny. It, and one of the things that I want to talk to you guys about and why I'm kind of excited to talk to you is because you're using the podcast as, as a, uh, a strategy to kind of really, really get the word out. Um, for a, a lot of businesses, they've kind of fell into it. And they either had a podcasting guy that was a big believer like myself. Like, hey, I love podcasting. I want to do it, so I'll, I'll man it up. But I like how you guys are coming and kind of coming together as a company, it seems like, and, and being forward, trying to push it forward. Um, can you guys talk a little bit about your strategy with podcasts or your idea with maybe you, where you guys think you want to want to take it and how it kind of overlays with, with your brand? Right. Um, so there were two reasons why we decided to move ahead with a strategy. Um, one was, as you mentioned, the brand building, right? Um, what are the normal ways of building a brand? Um, which is either, either you uh, publish uh, you you give Facebook ads or something like that, or you have like you present in conferences, right? Uh, versus uh, <clears throat> who do we like? We, so we look at our, at our audience. Who, you know who is who is our audience? Uh, growers, right? Um, and and it's a B two C model, right? There are so many of them. So instead of us like trying to see how, how many, uh, if we have a metric of how many growers we can reach out to. Uh, uh, Doing it like one by one or conferences by conferences wasn't possible. Yeah. So what's the best way out? Um, you know, start a podcast by the growers for the growers of the growers. Right. That's uh, cool. And, and and it aligns well because most of the growers are out in the fields uh, for six or seven hours in a day. Yeah. They like listening to their phones. Um, that's 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 one. And the second thing was clearly you know. Uh, how do we build relationships in uh, with exec le- executive level in the ag, ag industry, all right? And 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 all those executives, uh, you know, they, they they want to be portrayed as thought leaders. Yeah. Uh, in their spaces, and so you give them a forum for for a, becoming a thought leader, uh, so that they feel their ideas being are being transmitted uh, across to the sector. Uh, then your likelihood of building that relationship increases. Hundred percent, man. Yeah, I mean, I love that thought process. Yeah, you, you, you know, um, how big is your market size? Like, how how many potential, you know, growers are there out there? I'm, I'm just totally. Uh, so, so if, <laughs> if we go by the Silicon space. Valley metric of TAM, <laughs> <laughs> like TAM, you know, that's that's let's say we're, you know what clearly worth uh, more billion, you know, worth uh, uh, billion dollars or more. Wow. Um, in the ag space, only for like a few crops that we are targeting. Okay, and that's that's in the U.S. Yeah, uh, globally, it's worth more. Well, yeah, you know, so you know, if you're looking at really a couple of key accounts, really, right, a couple of key 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 partners, you guys are really looking to kind of build um, from a podcast standpoint. As I, that to me is one of the best ways because you have to be honest on the mics. There's something about when you grab the mic. At least when I first grabbed the mic, and you know, you can't, you can, you can, you can fake a smile in a picture, you know, like you can, you can fluff some things up. But when people start hearing the tone of your voice, there's something that's authentic about it. I think that that really resonates with people. And so, n- you know, knowing that that's going to be around for eternity or as long as they <laughs> <laughs> are going to keep this RSS feed live, right? Um, you, you know, I, I think it really aligns well with the longevity strategy of, bu- of brand building. And when you start getting in a room with people and just have relaxed conversations, like now I want to hear about where, where you guys are from and how you guys were coming up. Like that's the next, next yeah. place I'm going to go. I mean, like it changes the whole context of the conversation. It's just more bigger than business. And, and that's how I think that's where we're going to get back to. Like I was talking to Henry in the car and we were just saying, uh, you know, it's like there's so much like how life is this big circle, right? You kind of start in this place 
and it becomes this extremely transactional business. But if you go back to how business was done with seashells and, you know, they were trading mm-hmm. for other, like bartering for stuff, right? I mean, it was 100% a really heavily relationship-driven type of process. And I think with all the tech that we have that has kind of driven a lot of the AI and, you know, all this learning that we're doing, we're going to get back to a lot of those things that we did in the past. And so, you know, having that longevity of your brand and just your personal brands too matters. So, uh, all right, guys, who wants to start? Where are you guys from? Backgrounds? What are you guys, you know, (laughs) how are you guys coming up? All right. So I come from uh, a very small town in the north of India. Mm. Uh, It's very conservative. Uh, Conservative to an extent that you can't even sell eggs uh, in the town. Uh, So it's a Hindu holy town, also known as the Makkah of Hindus or a Vatican of Hindus. Uh, so I come from that town, uh, grew up there, uh, you know, <clears throat> till till my high school. Uh, I was there till my high school. And the funny thing is I, I, I studied in a missionary Christian school. So I, I you know, I grew up. Uh, Are you Christian? No, you I'm Hindu. Hindu. Okay, uh, yeah. So I, I, <laughs> I, so I was raised in a very conservative yeah, Hindu holy family. Yes. But then I studied in a very conservative Christian school. I get it. <laughs> I get it. I get it. So I'm not Catholic, but I went to a Catholic high school for numerous years. It's because, you know, is that probably the exact same reason why you went to a Christian school? Yeah, you know? Yeah. I keep going. I'm sorry. No, no, no. It's, <laughs> you're right. It was, it was funny, like, uh, reading uh, Bible in the school and then coming back and reading, like, our Hindu holy scripture, Gita, uh, in the house. Um, yeah. Anyways, I did that, and, and, and um, uh, till that time, I was like a, you know, as you say, like a frog in a small pond, mm-hmm. uh, a small pond. Didn't know what what exists beyond that pond. Yeah. Um, and uh, the first time I flew was when I was 19. Uh, uh, back then, when I was coming to the U.S. for for my summer internship, that uh, you know the first flight that I ever took was was an international flight. Okay. Wow! <laughs> wow! You ask me, like, 32 <laughs> hours, <Yeah>. three stops. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> I thought I was going to get broken into it, man. <laughs> <laughs> I guess flying across the country is like a cakewalk, man. You're like, three hours, is it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then, yeah, I've been like, uh, uh, but fortunately, be, you know, I, I, uh, I, I feel lucky that I grew up uh, with that kind of, um, you know, an, an upbringing uh, mm-hmm. with values. Mm-hmm. Um, and and uh, those values are still driving uh a lot of what I am right now and what I would be. Uh, and some of those values are also uh, central to the com- to this company as well that we are running. That's awesome, man. Really cool. So, Bona, let's hear it, man. Yeah, I feel like you didn't even jump into, like, your actual, like, adult life at all. You're that <laughs> <laughs> He skipped out on a lot. Did um, he? Did he? Yeah. Uh, he's being, he's being, he's being, he's being, he's being humble. He's being humble. It's background, man. It's yeah. Yeah. Keep it relaxed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I'm actually more from your area. I'm from Long Beach originally. Okay, okay cool. In Southern California. Nice. Um, was raised in an Iranian family. I did not go to Christian or Catholic school. Yeah. I went to public school. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Um, Wilson High School, yeah. Yeah, nice. um, yeah, I went to UC Berkeley after graduating from Wilson. Studied civil engineering there. Uh, stayed for a year of grad school focusing on like renewable energy and climate change stuff. Partially from the standpoint of like not knowing what I wanted to do yet, but partially because I had somewhat explored the space before and got into it. Um, and then just worked for some clean tech companies. I worked um, in venture capital focusing on clean tech for a while. Mm-hmm. And then decided that I just missed being on the side of building stuff. Uh, and I came across the, this job opportunity in this like fellowship page I'm a part of. Reached out to Himanshu and at first, he was in India, so he didn't respond to me for a week. And then he responded, <laughs> and, I, and I was in Cuba, and I was like, I only have reception for one day, but I'll respond to you in a week when I'm back. Um, that's all the best stars to build, man. I, <laughs> Seriously. And then uh, it worked out, and now we're here, and it's now we're, now we're trying to start this podcast, so excited. So so literally, you guys got linked up because you reached out just pretty much to like an actual job post? or Yeah, well, okay. it was, so I did this fellowship thing in the fall, which mm-hmm. is like climate and energy focused. Yep. Um, and I think Hamanchu met some guy at a party who was had done the fellowship three years prior, nice. and that guy posted it in the job page, and then I just uh, reached out and we took it from there and it ended up working out. Cool, really cool, man. So, all right, let's talk about your adulthood because I feel like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I feel like Bon is right, man. I mean, you know, like we kind of stopped at like twenty or something. You said you're nineteen, <laughs> you took your flight, and we're like, all right, small pond to CEO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
That's a, that's a nice jump, man. <laughs> so, so, I mean, like, I mean, no, 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 but, but honestly, how'd you guys get to this place? Like, I, how'd you get to Climate AI? Like, how did this come about? Because there's, I mean, obviously, you're in the Bay. I mean, there's, you know, the whole startup thing is real out here. I think it's it's difficult to, to not at least dip your toe in the water and, and want to do something just for yourself or at least, you know, built around your mission. So how'd you guys end up with this as your mission? All right. Um, so, so Bona keeps asking me as to what the real story is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're finally going to get to it. We're going to get it one day for the podcast when the truth comes out. Bona's like, finally, I can think of it. You've seen, uh, you know, our, uh, us telling, you know, talking to our clients yeah. about the origins of climate AI that has kept on changing. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I mean, we tailor it to a particular client. Yeah. Uh, but that said, uh, you know, the real story is I've spent six years uh, working in this field of climate change. Uh, I've worked in uh, private sector, public sector. Uh, in the private sector, I was with this French energy company, Arriva, uh, in their smart grids team, where they were trying to deploy smart uh, transmission products uh, for European and Indian grids. Um, they did some stuff there, and then somehow I got lucky that I got this opportunity to work in the Prime Minister's office in India. Uh, back then, they were trying to figure out, uh, you know, renewable energy was the new thing in the game. Uh, in 2012 or something. Mm -hmm. Um, So they wanted, they had zero background in uh, technology. Uh, They were experts in politics and policy and finance. Sure. And I was, I had zero background in policy and politics and finance. I had a lot of background in technology. So it matched very well. Mm -hmm. Um, So back then, because there was no one else, uh, you know, doing anything anything related to technology, I, uh, I got a lot more responsibility than I could like imagine. Uh, in Prime Minister's office, uh, starting from like helping uh, my boss uh, uh, with writing technical uh, te- technical policy memos, to finally crafting you know the plan for India for the 12 you know uh, renewable energy plan for India uh, uh, in 2012, wow. um, and then uh, because then you suddenly build trust that you can perform uh, and and. Be honest, I got lucky because the bar to performance was so low, and you can imagine in, in government offices, uh, <laughs> like most governments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the barrier is like, all right, is that guy still alive in there? <laughs> yeah, right, he's working, man. Yeah, uh, and then uh, close to your mouth. sorry, yeah. yeah. Um, and then uh, you know, and and my my boss used to be he's he's an he was an Oxford grad, okay. uh, a Rhodes scholar, very smart. Yeah. Um, but then he, he had this thing that, okay, how can, uh, you know, developed economies like, like IEA, International Energy Agency, with a bunch of, like, uh, uh, high, uh, 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 you know, experts from, from Europe coming together and, and telling us what to do with our own country? Sure. Um, and, and why not we have our own, uh, you know, energy and climate modeling center where we can assess what India requires uh, with the constraints, the constraints that we have mm-hmm. um, and come up with something which which people believe in more. Like, um, And he looked at the room, okay, who will do it? All right, Himanshu will do it. <laughs> 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 the way I do it with Bona now. Like, we don't need to start a podcast. Who will do it? Bona will do it. <laughs> will do it. <laughs> hey, carries right on, man. Keep yeah. the, I'm passing keep, the legacy yeah. now. I'm telling you. Beautiful. All right, so that was pretty much it. And, and, and in that process, whether I was leading uh, the entire climate modeling for India, yes, I got to meet uh, basically who's and who uh, in the entire uh, sec- you know, climate sector, including CEOs, uh, not, in, not just in India, with uh, around the world, because the policy that we would roll out affect companies like BP, Shell, uh, GE, sure. uh, the big renewable energy players, transport players. So build a good network, uh, talk to like, policy experts, uh, and so on and so forth, and and realize that uh, you know, given the future climate change scenarios, uh, countries like India are so screwed. Hmm. Uh, in any case, when I was in Prime Minister's office, we used to think about how every year ten thousand farmers commit suicide. Wow! Uh, in the west of India, because that region is very much drought with, uh, with with is it's drought prone. Uh, so they have no other choice. So they, they start growing their crops, uh, and then uh, more often than not, droughts are becoming more frequent and, and intense. Uh, they can't repay their loans, and uh, they end up committing suicides. Wow! And we what the the the, the you know the 
the solution that government would have w- would have uh, back in india is probably similar to like every government would have like roll out these packages and drought you know or these uh, debt relief funds but that's more of like a bandaid yeah rather than a long term solution um so that's when i realized that um someone needs to actually come up with uh these tools um and 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 um and, and products to actually help uh stakeholders like these growers uh, in india or like energy companies and what not who are realizing that physical risk of climate change are becoming absolutely central every year and so i always had this thing that there's a need and and the need is actually increasing every year yeah. as people are realizing more and more i just didn't know uh, i just just didn't have the confidence to start a company because i had always worked in uh, everything else except for like uh, you know uh, starting something of my own um, and and that's pretty much it. like coming to stanford gave me that confidence uh, and the, you know the network that stanford has the professors that you have and it's uh, it's it's easier to start a company from there and so i i always had the idea just never had the ecosystem uh, and the confidence to do it i just got this confidence 3 uh, years ago that's all awesome, my co-founder man. max uh, that's also very central to starting this like we we you know st- uh, thinking about like we started with being project mates uh, back at the business school to the point that okay let's go let's go to this party and see if we can find some dates um <laughs> together uh, to to the point that uh, we became roommates um uh, and uh, eventually we find ended up finding dates together <laughs> yeah yeah uh, and we started uh, ended up starting company together uh, we got engaged at the same time wow and we are getting married at the same year as well ah oh, that's cool man that's <laughs> super cool man dude so that story should be told like a thousand times man I mean because um I think that there's a lot of stats that people hear about climate change but you know numbers don't really move people normally you know because you hear so many stats about what's happening out there and and like oh okay yeah there's you know there's more droughts there's more frequent you know weather pattern changes and there's temperature rising and we hear them you know we're like oh yeah it's bad <laughs> great yeah. but it's not normally the thing that gets us to move into action that story though like hearing that there's farmers that become so stressed because they can't pay back the debt and you know obviously i mean that that's a that's a mover that's a marker mover to me or at least that's an emotional hot button to at least get people to say stop and let me think about what what options are out there um that's cool man i love that i love the back story behind it it's really cool but but you know um so all right you you guys have the back story so tell me a little bit about where you guys are going now so you guys obviously are launching a podcast try to get the word out um you're trying to build the partnerships um how's the process and maybe kind of maybe what's some ideas or strategy you guys are working on if you don't mind digging into the weeds and if you don't I'll edit that out <laughs> <laughs> Bruno you want to start Yeah So I mean yeah so Himanshu you mentioned this this issue of like the risk that climate change is starting to bring about um and I guess what we're trying to do is we're really trying to build an industry around this concept of climate resilience Yeah So the term climate just means weather after 14 days so whether that happens 1 month 3 months 1 year 10 years from now is all called climate and climate change is a part of that but it's not the only part like we can there's things that happen in terms of like weather volatility a few months from now that we want to deal with um but in general we're trying to create this industry of climate resilience to help virtually every sector of the economy and it's so Himanshu is talking about this like emotional story and that's definitely what drives all of us and that's why we all join this company mm-hmm. but there's also a financial component and that's like what will appeal more to companies and that's how it's going to become more actionable and tangible for these individuals mm-hmm. um every sector from the energy sector to agriculture to construction to insurance to finance all require an understanding of what the weather's going to be doing um anywhere from a few months to a few years right if you're a construction worker you want to know when it's going to rain so you don't bring in your drywall and get it screwed up and have to get a new shipment come in. Yeah. Um if you're an energy company, you want to know how much wind power you're going to generate in the next year. You want to know where to put your wind farm. If you're an agriculture company, you know what type of crops I plant this year, what's going to be happening a year from now. So it really touches every sector of the economy. Um and we think that climate uh information needs to be factored into all these decisions, not just because it's the morally right thing to do, but because it's a financially sustainable decision. So really trying to price climate into things because it's beneficial from both those standpoints. Love it. Yeah, 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 100% because you know, I think that the whole backstory gets people to 
wake up and pay attention. Mm-hmm. But what holds and what makes true business choices, you got to have some ROI. Yeah. You got to have some real, you know, metrics around what you're up to. Yeah, the, I would. Cool. I would just like to add, like the difficult thing is that climate change has become a polarized issue. Mm. So for some industries, we have to target the financial component a lot more and leave out a lot of that terminology because they have a natural aversion towards it because they think, oh, even if we say the word climate, not even climate change, it's associated with climate change, and they jump to immediately Democrat. And if they are a primarily Republican constituency and a Republican industry, um, it's a very hard sell. So we need to be careful how we like position things for people, and that's, that's been a tough line to walk, but we're starting to figure out how to navigate it. It's really cool, man. I mean, you know, uh, one of the things I was talking to somebody else about last week when they were talking about, you know, you know, where's podcast going? They're just, you know, questions about podcasting. And I was like, look, one of the things that's cool about podcasting is you can wrap some context around the conversation. Whereas if you do a, a simple blog post, most people don't read them. They just read the headline and then they assume what you said, right? If you do a Facebook yeah. pic, they assume what the picture's about. I mean, and so, but podcast, you can have a conversation. And not saying that you're going to force them to believe or you're not going to work that in, but it, you're normally the single voice that's happening or that conversation that's happening in their earbuds mm-hmm. at, the, at, at the moment. So they can at least hear out the full thought, whereas it's yeah. not just a sound bite that you grab and then roll. Yeah, <laughs> there's, yeah. there's also like the added like empathy component of like you're with the person and you're way more likely to be able to try to like feel what the other person's feeling if you're face to face as opposed to reading a bo- like a blog post and then just getting into like angry comments section <laughs> you know you're like there's a lot of research that shows like looking into someone's eyes makes you way more likely to be empathetic 100% yeah. so i think that's a really good point you, what are you trying to say like youtube comments are legit come on man you go no, on there no <laughs> i'm clear i hate I'm like i used to we had a conversation about this at lunch the other day and one of our i was like i do not even touch them and one of my coworkers was like that's how I became a professor. Like I was like so into like disproving people in wow. YouTube comments and like getting into it. And then he was like, eventually it just became too much and I had to pull out. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, man, you know, if you try to battle that, that's a that. I mean, I'm sure you're gonna definitely sharpen your actual wit just being able to kind of get yeah. in there. But man, it, we're talking about a waste of energy. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah. know, I mean, talking about something better to do. Man. And some people are just there to poke. Yeah. Oh, look, I'm, look, come on. Those, yeah. Some people are just sitting at the house eating Cheerios. Like, hey, <laughs> yeah. even just say anything negative. You know, I, I'm with you, but I'm just going to go the other way, you know? Yeah. Just, just, just try to get a response. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, well, well, guys, you know what? We are, we are about to wrap up, man. But um, any other closing thoughts you guys kind of want to leave about climate AI and, what you, and maybe some opportunities you guys are looking for? Maybe you guys have the podcast coming out. Any guests you guys are looking for to kind of jump on the podcast? You know, um, so, so we, you know, we, we had a call with uh, Peter Mondavi Jr., uh, the owner of Mondavi Wines. Wow. Um, so he, he, he would be our first uh, podcast guest. Um, That's a great way to start. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, yeah. And we were surprised, like, the kind of enthusiasm that he showed when, he, when we asked him, like, would you, be like, would you like to be on a podcast that we are starting? And we were, like, very honest, like, we are starting the podcast. Would you like to be our first guest? And he said, yeah, sure, I would love to. If I, you know, uh, please come over to to Napa Farms and uh, we can do a podcast here. Uh, so that was pretty encouraging. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, having said that, you know, it seems like uh, if it, if, even if this becomes, uh, you know, uh, normally effective, um, we can get in, uh, you know, the who's and who of uh, agriculture sector. But also because we have to be very grounded and, and think about, like, who did we start the podcast for? for growers. So we also have to target, uh, you know, those progressive growers who are doing stuff uh, for their fields and have realized value from that mm-hmm. uh, with regards to climate, uh, climate change, so that other growers, when they listen to them, they also think about, okay, you know, uh, this is maybe, uh, you know, this is something I need to do to increase yields in the long run. To increase, uh, you know, to maintain to to maintain sustainability of my farms in the long run, and and they are more likely to believe uh, the other fellow growers than anyone else telling them what to do. Yeah, no, it's true, man. You know, it's a. Uh, I got some ideas around that too, but yeah, I think targeting the trying to loop the, the growers into the conversation is is super important because um, you, you know if it's, if it's a podcast for the company, you want to to build those partnerships and build those relationships. Um, targeting the people that you want to network with and you know and obviously work with is um, is, is key as well as those influencers people that are just the, like the actual sexy names right mm-hmm. yeah uh, because we talk about <laughs> yeah, seriously yeah. You, you talk about growing the podcast you know having the right collabs having the right people on the show um, all those help and influence and just help the podcast get found help the word get spread and 
people would want to hear from them, you know? Like, just they want to tune in to hear, oh, well, what are they doing? And why do they care about this? Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's cool, man. I think it will also be interesting to see how the views differ between, like, these corporates, the growers, and the academics because there's a lot really of conflicting fun. information that comes out. Of course. And it will be interesting to see – how that works out and how the dialogue goes between these three different parties that don't normally get to interact very often. Who's going to host it? Are you going to be the host? I think Come Manchu, on. yeah. We both of you guys going to host? Yeah, both of us will host yeah. it. And oh, that's then, perfect. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was about to say, I kind of like it when there's, if you can get two different people in the room to kind of moderate or if you have a, like, so one thing I, saw, I heard from the guys at Gimlet Media recently, they said that the highest performing shows, and, and I see this as well, um, the highest, most downloaded shows are the guys that get into this companionship type of podcast, which is, which is interesting uh, for a couple of reasons. One, because you get these people having these banter back and forth, and you feel like you're just a friend in the room, you know, like a fly on the wall, yeah. and you're just listening. Like, oh yeah, these are my guys. Like you don't know them, <laughs> you know, like yeah. you know, you don't know them at all, yeah. but you feel like you're you're, you're kind of with them. If you saw them, you kind of know them enough already. Um, and so when you have two two hosts, you can kind of you can kind of get that. Um, as well as the guys, if you can get someone that can naturally loosen people up. So you guys have a good energy with each other. Like, I feel like you guys could lead it and talk about the technical aspects. You got the, you have the passion, you have the, you know, almost like the art and science. It's kind of how I'm looking at you guys. Art and <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, that's a nice flow. That's a nice flow. So you guys can kind of work that in because when you get people from opposite sides of thought, um, being able to balance out the conversation has been one of the art forms. I feel like it, that has to be developed over time. Yeah, it's talking to people that don't understand your backgrounds and that can't get their arms around why you think the way you think. You know about certain situations, and but those are the those are the, those are the most needed conversations, right? And the more that I think that we can have them in a space where it's you know relaxed, not just you know you know <laughs> not even going to talk about the news channels <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> type of debate style that everyone's kind of you know exhausted of. I would imagine. Um, that's going to be some of the best quality content for you guys to kind of get out there. Yeah. It's going to spread. That's, I've, I've never noticed that, but that's like I definitely, as soon as you said that, I was like, oh, wow, yeah, that's exactly. Like, all the podcasts that I really enjoy, yeah. the the people I listen to, I just feel like I'm like, like I'll be like cooking food, like laughing, and my friends like, what are you, what are you doing, man? And I'm like, oh, I'm just, you know, we're, I'm, I'm hanging out with my friends in my podcast. That's it. I mean, I, I mean, some of the top ones are just like that, man. So, I mean, then it's just the same couple guys, maybe they invite yeah. some else in the room. And they talk about the subject and then kind of, you know, get into it. And it's that easy back and forth. So, And that's why Joe Rogan is crazy because he does it alone. Like he can make anyone into a socialite and gets everyone to open up and it turns into a two-hour free-flowing conversation. And he's just doing it. It's a real skill set. Man. He's a crazy guy. And, 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 <laughs> I, mean, I mean, seriously, like I feel like I, I, mean, I, listen, to, I listen to Joe Rogan all the time. And, but, yeah, it, it's a real art form that he has, like yeah. to kind of get in the room. And he pulls different opinions, people, different thoughts. I mean – he, and he, but he, he still does it where a way he doesn't lose like himself in the process. Yeah. Like you kind of still know where he stands too, yeah. but he lets the person voice where they you know and why they kind of got to where they got to. And he's a really smart guy. Like I always I knew him through UFC. So when yeah. I found out he had a podcast and I started listening to it, I was like, what? This guy is actually like very in, intelligent. Like mm-hmm. was was like going back and forth and was making people who were professionals in their field question their own views. And I was like, wow, this guy is all around an insane person. Hey, man, Bono, that's going to be you coming up. Yeah, right? hopefully, we'll see, hopefully. <laughs> the brand new Joe Rogan, man, hey. hey. Shave my head. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Give me some UFC. Put on, like, 40 pounds. Yeah. And then I'll be- <laughs> well, all right, guys, let's go ahead and wrap it up, man. But please tell everybody how to find you guys, how to learn more about the company, and, you know, any other websites that you guys think are relevant. Yeah, well, the website is climate.ai. Yeah. We got the domain, luckily. Um, yeah, that's, I don't know how you guys pull that out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that's yeah, it's thanks to my co-founder. Like he, so Max, um, he was locked into his laptop. I'm not kidding. For seven consecutive days. <laughs> <laughs> so that no one else ends up getting, you know, uh, buying that, that domain name. He was just waiting on it for like that, you know, for it to kind of like, free up or what? And there was like, this was like a dynamic <laughs> bidding process, right? <laughs> yeah. So he bid and he was bidding like no one else should end up bidding higher. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so he was bidding on it, uh, bidding on it yeah. switching to his to his bidding screen like every five minutes, every ten minutes. Jeez. And he did that for seven days, and thanks to that guy's, you know, uh, sweat and toil, <laughs> we have that domain name. <laughs> okay, with us. Man. Respect. Yeah. He's already like five <laughs> committed. He's in. He's in. I'm just sure off the whole um, domain name. 
any other type of social media handles you guys are on? You guys LinkedIn? You guys do it Instagram or Twitter? This, this podcast is kind of our entry into the real world. I think yeah. we've been kind of low-key while we figure out what we're doing. And yeah. we're kind of starting to get our traction, figuring out our bearings. So I think the podcast is the first way through. Love it, man. Love it. Well, you know what, guys? Thank you so much for jumping on the podcast. Fun talking to you guys. Look forward to checking out your show. But if you guys find the name, maybe I'll uh, come back and post it later. But up until then, man, really, guys, uh, really appreciate you guys jumping into the podcast space. We yeah. need more companies talking about things that they actually care about, you know, and doing it with the right heart and, and the right intentions behind it. Yeah. Sorry, guys. We're out. Thanks for, us. Thanks for having us. Appreciate it. Boom.